good. So you take your queen cells off, and you're going to come to your mating nuke, no matter what size it is, whether it's this little queeny one of, of uh, Nina's, uh, or a big one, whether it be any size on up. And I usually just spread my frames apart and put the queen cell down in there and kind of scrunch the flames back together. And they're fat and happy. Uh, come back a few days later and make sure that, uh, that they're doing okay. Uh, again, you don't want to leave that big hole there too long because they will build comb in there. A mating nuke doesn't need a whole lot of bees in it. Just needs a couple handfuls. This is your feeder. It's built into this little box. Got a little screen for the bees to walk down so that they don't get uh, drowned in the in the stuff at the bottom. Uh, it's got wax on the bottom to keep it sealed, and uh, you know, and that's uh, that's what uh, all it's needing. And these are little miniature frames that you know the, the bees didn't draw that out in here. These are put into another box, a couple boxes that are made to set over top of a full hive to draw the comb out. And uh, you know, and that's that's pretty much what what gets done with uh, you guys done are moving that. in about five minutes, and your move will just be inside here. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. Now, do so you feed? Do you feed in there? Yes, that yeah. You, you so they, that little side, screen. That little well, the the little chamber. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So you can have something that small, uh, and then you can have something a little bit bigger, like those ones. We'll walk out that way. Do you have to worry about ventilation no. in these little guys? Uh, these are hanging, there's I think a hundred of these hanging from some trees in Dana's yard that, that they made brackets and hung them in the trees. They're kind of partly in the shade. Uh, ventilation, you know, they will get crowded. You know, that's the thing you have to watch. And when when you're going to put a new, a new queen in there to emerge, you want to make sure that once she emerges and gets mated, she has room to lay eggs. So that's that's the other catch-22 with with the smaller you go, the more you have to maintain and manage it to make sure that you know that frame that that is full of brood in there right now, that if it's not going to emerge by the time that queen emerges to give her room to lay once she gets mated, you need to move that brood somewhere else so that it can emerge and put something in there that, that she will have room to lay eggs in. So that's what you have to do there. Uh, the, the next size, like I say, is the ones that Dana, Dana made uh, down here on, uh, on the end. This is the one that he's using in his project. Uh, basically made out of, you know, for low budget operators, go find yourself some skids. Uh, that's what these are made out of. Old scrap skids, cut the, cut the stuff to fit. Um, put a little little notch down in there, uh, scrap skids for the sides and the top and the bottom, uh, some just regular scrap three quarter inch something for the for the front and the back so that you have enough uh, enough room to cut your ledge in there. Uh, the frames are uh, medium frames that are made from uh, equipment that is used for uh, home hunting. <laughs> Uh, your top bar is thin, doesn't have any fancy doodads uh, on the ends to hold the end bars, it's just flat. So you take your standard frame, you cut it in half, and you just cut a couple notches in here to put your end bar in, buy an extra bag of end bars, and uh, wire the foundation in. Uh, they've tried a couple different ways of, of doing it, putting a couple wires in there still works the best. To draw these out, you put the two of them together, uh, you put a block of wood between them, and you put a screw in each one, and that holds them together solid enough that you can put these over top of a full-size hive, and, uh, and they'll draw it out. <coughs> now, the other way of putting the queen cell in, rather than stick it in the top and keep the, the frames spread apart, you can take and put the queen cell basically in the center of the frame. And there's the queen right there. Pretty black beauty. <laughs> she is a beauty. And uh, you can look at the cell and you can see that she definitely has emerged. And uh, 
Yeah. And so the, this lets you oh, keep your spacing between your frames a little bit better. But uh, she's a real pretty one. So that's the other way of of putting the putting your queen cell in. There's there's ample room to do it do it that way. It just again depends on the individual how you want to do it. You know the old saying: you ask ten beekeepers the same question, you're going to get at least twelve answers. <laughs> uh, so you can use mini nukes, mini mini or little baby nukes, mini nukes of some kind. You can use uh, nukes that that have uh, five frames, mediums, and this is one, this is, this is, there's how, that's how those are, that's how those are put together. Uh, this box is a little old and sloppy, like it's uh, barely fits the frames in it, like that one's screwed down the bottom. Uh, so you can do mediums, uh, you can do full size, like this one is a, this one has a four frame, uh, four frame nuke, uh, instead of, uh, instead of five frame. Uh, you can get the, uh, the big boxes in what they call the queen castles, which are divided into either three sections or four sections or two sections. You can, you can have one of those with a, with a thin piece of masonite down the center that uh, you can have two five-frame nukes in, in one box. You know, so it's, again, just on the, on the preference and the equipment you have available or the equipment that you want to buy. You know, it's, there's no... No set standard, as you can see here. There's there's all kind of stuff and just about any kind of equipment and arrangement that uh, that you can come up with. Any questions? <laughs>